going on guys? My name is Matidio and welcome to episode 1 of Bill and Ricky Rising, my Football Manager 2018 series. And this first episode is, we're not going to be jumping into any games or anything like that. This first episode is just going to be getting to know the club a little bit. Um, because, admittedly, hands up, I've never played Football Manager as anyone other than Leeds United or England. Uh, purely because I didn't have any interest in playing as anyone other than Leeds or England. But now I'm doing the whole YouTube thing, and I did Leeds la last year. I wanted to, I wanted to get out of my comfort zone a little bit. I wanted to do something a little bit different, and this is where I arrived because um, I, I read a couple of articles about Billericay Town, and you know that kind of. Uh, stoked the interest a little bit and then I read about the owner Glenn Tamplin and and some of the things that he's had to deal with throughout his life um, mental health issues being one of them and that kind of resonated with me a little bit because I've dealt with anxiety and depression and I know how difficult it is once you get into that sort of uh, that, that sort of stuff how difficult it is to get out of it again uh, and you never really you never really leave it behind but you just learn how to deal with it so anybody who can go through that sort of stuff and come out the other end and be successful they have my respect basically so there that's why i'm basically doing bill and ricky town like i said get out of the comfort zone and respect for the owner and uh, also interest on the club really because i'm i'm interested to see how far this club can go not only in the game but also in real life and admittedly i've kind of become a little bit of a big a bill and ricky town fan um recently so i've been watching a lot of their goals they do have a youtube channel which you'll find in the in the description of this video uh, but yeah, let's jump straight into the episode and um, take a look at the history of the club. So, uh, this is a brief history. I'm not going to go through everything because that would be quite a lot uh, to go through considering they were founded in 1880. So they are quite an old club. Um, when you consider Leeds were founded in 1919, that's nearly 140 years now this club's been around. So... Yeah, they're uh, they're one of the older clubs in the country, I would say. Uh, Semi-professional in terms of status, they have a regional reputation, as you would imagine. They are very uh, probably the biggest team in Essex. Um, if there are any supporters of other Essex-based teams that want to challenge that assertion, then leave a comment down below. And the uh, the finances are secure, as you would imagine, having a steel magnet owning the club. Um, he's put quite a lot of money into the team already, and the club. And that's something we're going to touch on in a second. Um, but the ground is called New Lodge. Um, but it's actually had a bit of a change. I think it's called the AGP Stadium to line up with Glen Tamplin's AGP Steel Company. Um, there have been a few improvements and the capacity now is 4,500 just over. Uh, got a grass surface and other artificial stuff. Uh, stadium condition average, blah, blah, blah. On that front... Looking at some of the local rivals, the fierce ones are Canvey Island, Clemsford City and AFC Hornchurch. Uh, Hornchurch sorry. Uh, unfortunately, Clemsford are in the league above us and Canvey Island and Hornchurch are in the league below us. So we're not going to get to play these teams unless we draw them in one of the cup competitions. Uh, but the other rivals, Grays Athletic, Haybridge, Thurrock and Braintree. Uh, Thurrock are in our division, so I imagine that would act as our, our big derby for the season. The one we really want to win because they are... Uh, like I said, not fierce rivals, but they are. There is a little bit of a rivalry between us, so hopefully um, we have a good encounter there. Um, the key or the icons, the the, the big the big players from past and present. Um, John Kendall, uh, an icon, as is Steve Jones. Uh, favorite personnel: Nathan Elder and Chris Weltdale. Neither of those two are at the club as things stand right now. And looking at the cup competitions, uh, as you can see, it's not a an overflowing trophy cabinet we have here. Um, four trophies, three of them being the FA Vars, and these were all won between 1976 and 1979. Uh, the most recent trophy we won was the Bostic uh, League Premier Division trophy. That was back in the 2011-2012 season, but unfortunately uh, they went up to the Vanarama National South Division and came straight back down again. And they've been in the, uh, the Bostic League Premier Division ever since, or otherwise known as the Athenian league i think it is the esthemian premier division i think i'm pronouncing that right if i'm not tell me i'm an idiot in the comments below uh we've got one affiliated club uh, great wakering they make their or they play their trade in the essex senior football league and um, it's standard affiliate program really we can send players out on loan to great wakering we'll host an annual friendly but if great wakering do manage to get to the same level as billy town then that will terminate the link between us so like i said fairly standard 
In terms of some of the records here, um, the most goals in the season was um, that record belongs to Leon Gutzmore uh, with 51 goals in the 97-98 season. The most league appearances for the club uh, is 190 and that uh, belongs to Leon Hunter who is a chief scout at Stevenage. Um, there are a couple of other records that don't, they don't make mentions of uh, here, unfortunately. Um, the highest league goal scorer, uh, sorry, the highest goal scorer all told is and I'm just going to grab my phone and I'll look at Wikipedia. It is uh, Fred Claydon with 273 and the most appearances for the club total. Uh, John Pullin with 418 there. So a little bit of Billy Ricky history for you. Um, in terms of transfers, the highest fee that's been received was 22,500 for Steve Jones, who went to West Ham United back in 1992. So that's a fairly big fee. And this is a bit of a funny one. Uh, 27,500 for Dean Inman from Maidenhead United on the 29th of October 2017. So we've travelled forward in time to complete this transfer uh, only to bring him back four months so he can be with us from the start of the season because Glenn Tamplin has that kind of money to build a time machine and that's what he's done. <laughs> Uh, highest attendance, uh, 3,500 versus West Ham United back on the 9th of August 1977. But that's actually changed because they do have a new record there. And again, a little bit of a history lesson for you. The new record is 4,500 and it was against a West Ham 11 on the 8th of August 2017. So, like I said, a bit of history for you there. And like I said, there have been uh, some improvements recently. They've uh, One of the big ones, of course, they've had is... The owner, Glenn Tamplin, had bought two £250,000 screens to go up around the stadium. So they're like Premier League level screens, you see. Uh, you know, some teams have. They've got those now. Two, Not one, two. So <laughs> they are going in the right direction and he is very, very serious about it. Um, we'll look at some of the other bits in a moment. We'll take a, a bit of a, a brief look at the, uh, at the squad and so on in a second. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's basically a brief history of it. If I've got anything wrong and you are a Billy Ricky Town fan, then make sure you leave a comment down below and also subscribe to stay up to date with this series. Uh, it's always appreciated and uh, really hoping we can get to our goal of a thousand subscribers very very soon. We are heading in the right direction. Uh, but yeah, let's um, let's start that little segue. I don't know why I did that, but um, yeah, we're gonna go and look at the squad now. Okay then, so what we're going to do now is just take a uh, quick look, um, breeze over the, the, the first team and see what we're kind of dealing with here. So, uh, just to make it easy, I'm going to segregate it. Um, so, start off with the goalkeepers. Firstly, uh, we've got two on the books at the moment. So, I say on the books, one of them is, of course, out of contract as things stand. But the main one, Alan Julian, uh, 34 years of age, former um, Northern Irish uh, youth international. Um, stats not brilliant unfortunately um, journeyman goalkeeper he's been around a little bit but yeah this might be an area I need to address because like I said his stats aren't brilliant and uh, Lawrence Wymark uh, is out of contract as well and got a few teams sniffing around him and also even you know if I was to sign to a new contract probably not good enough for the first team so yeah that's probably an area I am going to look to address Moving on to defence, and we'll start off with uh, the centre-backs first of all. Um, we've got Leo Chambers, who is uh, our hot prospect also, a former West Ham uh, youth player, of course, came through their youth academy. Um, so, yeah, tackling's okay and marking's all right. Heading probably could be a little bit better. He can play right back, and from some of those stats, probably maybe the, the best area to play in, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, then we move on to Rob Swain, who is actually our captain. Um, as you can see, leadership 18. He's got very, very good determination. And his heading is also very good. His tackling is good. Marking mm, perhaps could be a little bit better. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely happy with him. He'll definitely be starting a fair few games for us. Um, then we've got Dean Inman. Uh, we've already mentioned him at the recipient of our highest transfer fee. Um, heading's good, uh, tackling's good, marking's all right as well. So he's probably looking about being our best centre back as things stand. Um, decent physicals, um, pace wise, probably one of our quicker centre defenders. Um, so yeah, he's good. He's going to get a lot of game time for us. Uh, next up is uh, Matt Payne. He came to bring the pain. Um, Heading's all right, tackling's all right, marking maybe could be a little bit better, and he's got uh, you know a decent work rate and determination also, very good bravery, and again you know decent natural fitness and strength as well, so he'll definitely get some game time for us. And uh, the next one, um, we'll take a look at right back now. So um, 
this name is probably familiar to some of you Wolves fans especially. Uh, Kevin Foley. Um, definitely looks like he'll be a starting right back. Good stats, you know, um, in the right areas really for a right back. You know, tackling's good. Uh, his positioning's all right. Crossing and dribbling's not too bad as well. Uh, he's also very determined. He's got decent leadership, so a potential candidate for that vice captaincy role. Um, the next one we've got Elliot Kebby, um, formerly of Leeds United actually. Uh, Leeds United came through the Leeds United youth system before joining um, Atletico Madrid for the princely sum of half a million pounds. Didn't quite work out for him. Moved back to England and uh, also had a stint in uh, Norway. I think it was. Was it Norway? Let me have a look. Let me just have a quick peek poo. It was Norway. It was Norway. It's uh I think that's how you pronounce it. If it's not, then I'm sorry. Um, but yeah. Um, can play at, uh, like I said, right back and uh, right wing back and uh, the right side of midfield as well. So all the way up right. Stats in terms of the technicals and the mentals, not brilliant. So, but he's got a little bit of time to improve. So we'll see what happens there. And we've also got um, Paul Konchesky as our one and only left back. Um, familiar to a lot of you, of course. Formula, formerly of Fulham, Liverpool, Leicester City and a few others as well. Uh, 36 years of age, so the physicals aren't brilliant in terms of the pace and uh, the acceleration and so on. But, you know, vastly experienced, as I said, played for a number of top clubs, also got two caps for England and, uh, yeah, like I said, he's the only left back we've got, so he will be the starting one, but that left sided of defence will be definitely be an area that I'm looking to address. Okay then, so moving on to midfield, and we'll stick to the centre of midfield first of all, and the big one that steps out from that uh, particular bunch is Jamie O'Hara, formerly, again, of Wolves. Um, very good stats. Physicals, maybe not so much, but uh, I think for the centre midfield, I'm not really putting too much emphasis on the physicals, but yeah, I think it's very, very clear he will be our starting centre midfielder and uh, the main outlet creatively from the centre midfield. Then we've got Rob Davis, and yeah, not brilliant. Probably someone I will be looking to move on, a ball winning midfielder, um, but yeah, like I said, he's not rated very high, as you can see, by one star on both the potential and uh, the, the actual ability and the potential ability, so he probably will move on. Um, next up, another Rob Evans this time, uh, Welsh. 22 years of age, still got about a time to develop. His mentals are okay overall, as are his physicals. His technicals maybe could use a bit of work, but like I said, he's got time to develop, so we'll see what comes from him. Uh, then we've got Danny Waldron, and again, looking like the most ideal candidate to partner um, Jamie O'Hara in the centre midfield. Um, you know, decent uh, technicals, decent mentals, uh, and also decent physicals as well. You know, overall, you know, non, not one area that particularly stands out, you know, apart from, say, determination, of course, and work rate. Uh, but yeah, um, overall, I think he's looking like the best candidate to partner Jamie O'Hara as things stand. Uh, now we're going to take a look at the flanks. Uh, we'll start off with this one here. Jermaine Pennant, again, a name that will stand out for quite a lot of you. The uh, Formerly the most expensive youth player in uh, in football, basically. I think it was £2 million Arsenal paid Nuts County for him. Um, quite clearly, our best winger at the club, so he will definitely be starting if we do employ a role uh, that can use either the right midfielder or right winger, which I imagine we will be. So, not much else to say there. Quite clearly our best player. Um, the next one, Sanchez Watt, and then another former Arsenal and uh, a Leeds player, of course, he had a, a loan spell at, uh, at Leeds United and uh, he's only just recently joined. His pace and his acceleration are good. Determination flair off the ball isn't too bad. His technicals aren't brilliant um, and he probably won't be improving anymore. But we'll see what happens. He can play on the left and he's a left footer as well, which I'd like. So he'll definitely get some game time. We'll see what comes, uh, comes from that. Uh, also got Sam Deering, bit of a jack of all trades. Uh, he can play on the left or the right, and he can play in the attacking midfielder centre role. Um, yeah, pretty good overall, actually. Um, technical's pretty good. The, the mentors are pretty good overall. The physicals maybe could be a, bit, a little bit better, but, uh, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Um, so, yeah, definitely think there's a, a role in there and uh, a position in the squad for him. We don't know what quite sure what that is yet, but we'll figure it out as we go along. Uh, we've also got Jeremy Lynch, who's out of contract. He can play on the right or the left. He might be someone I try and re-sign to a contract, because just purely because otherwise we may be a little bit thin on the ground when it comes to cover for some of the wired areas. Uh, but yeah, and he also features in the thumbnail, so congratulations, Jeremy. You win the prize uh, of being in the thumbnail. Good technique. Free kick taking's all right, as is his flair and so on. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, not saying yay or nay on him yet. We'll see how he does in pre-season training. 
And then we've got Ricky Modest, uh, who recently, I believe, got his first cap for Grenada and first goal. So congratulations, Ricky, if that's true. If I've got it wrong, then I apologise. Uh, dribbling's pretty good. Like I said, he's a bit of a jack of all trades again. He can play on the left and right of midfield. He can also play uh, up top as well. Uh, very good pace and acceleration and agility and natural fitness. He's also got pretty good flair off the ball movement. Isn't bad. So, yeah, uh, there's definitely going to be a position somewhere for him. I'm thinking more than likely maybe up top, but well, like, we'll see what happens. And now, lastly, we move on to the forwards. So we've already taken a look at Ricky Modest, so we'll move on to the next one down, which is Jake Robinson. And I'm a little bit disappointed his stats aren't better, actually, because he's been pretty much on fire, and he, he scored some absolutely belting goals in real life. He's the top scorer in um, in real life as well for Billericay Town. So, yeah, a little bit disappointed his stats aren't better. I was expecting a hell of a lot more, considering he's on £1,000 a week as well. That's not a uh, that's not a small sum at this level. So I was expecting a lot more, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I will be he will get games and he will get time to play. So we'll see what happens. He could surprise. He could just be one of those players that doesn't have really good stats, but just comes up with performances time and time again. So we'll see what happens. Uh, next one down, Dan Walker. Uh, again, possible other candidate to be leaving the club. He can play um, again on the right of midfield or uh, up top, but uh, I don't think his technical abilities really you know have him standing out in either of those positions the physicals aren't bad uh but everywhere else not good so again he might be somebody i look to move on considering he's on 700 pounds a week that money might be um better served elsewhere and trying to bring someone else in sorry dan uh, next up louis uh, and i apologize if i butcher your name louis theophanos um looking like being our best striker um you know dribbling and finishing uh, a good um also the technique isn't bad he's got good flair and determination and yeah i think overall i think um like i said no one exceptional area i don't think um but i think he is definitely our best forward uh, next up is Billy Bricknell, a.k.a. Bricktop. Um, don't know if that's his actual nickname, but that's what I'm going to be calling him. Um, not because he resembles him, of course, but uh, yeah, oddly enough, Billy Bricknell was on the transfer list when we started the game. Um, so I've taken him off and I've brought him back into the, the first team fold and, you know, his finishing's pretty good. He's got uh, good off the ball movement and teamwork and flair and so on. So yeah, he's definitely got a place in the team and will be getting some game time with us. Uh, lastly, uh, we've got the Man Mountain, which is Adam, uh, Adam Cunnington. Cunning Plan, I think I might call him. Um, big guy, six foot three, built like a brick outhouse and uh, target man, of course. So he's, uh, he's jumping reach, his strength is very good, his heading is very good. Uh, probably won't be able to play in a system which relies on just one forward, but having someone who can work off him, that definitely would be a thing. Uh, definitely would be something I would look into. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's basically the first team as things stand now. So um, just a quick brief look at the youth team. Um, got a couple of decent ones that are out on loan. Byron Lawrence uh, is one. Uh, probably would have liked to have had him here, but his, uh, his loan agreement runs until uh, the end of the season. So we're not going to see him until next season at the very earliest, unless um, an injury occurs or something like that. He's sent back. Uh, also got Brandon Ockren. Um, rated as potentially being uh, three and a half stars so uh, right back he's currently on loan again but he's only on loan until the, uh, the the start of the new year basically so he will be coming back in and potentially we'll get some game time here and there depending on what happens uh, says he's a winger um, in role in duty despite being a, uh, a defender wing back so we'll, we'll see what happens he's not at the club at the moment so uh, we'll see what happens there and lastly, taking a look at the under-18s, we've already got one player who's actually uh, here um, properly, which is Will Putt. And, um, yeah, stats-wise, there's nothing really to write home about, um, to be honest with you. He's the only other left-back at the club as well, so whether I have to call on him if I can't get someone else in, I'd rather not. But if we have to, then uh, I've got no other choice, really, I guess. Um, but like I said, um, potential ability, you've got two grayed-out stars and then potentially one and a half stars ability so probably not something to write home about but uh, yeah that's the uh, that's the overview of the team there for you Okay, so taking a quick look at the finances available, as you can see, we've got a budget of 50,000. Uh, we're going to get 70% of any transfer revenue that we do bring into the club also. Uh, the wage budget is quite high for a team at this particular level, I believe. 
Um, currently spending 27, um, well nearly enough 28,000. So we've got about two grand left to spend. Nearest makes no difference um, for the wage budget. So if we do need to bring someone in, I reckon for two grand, we can get a couple of decent players in and also for this sort of transfer fees. Uh, scouting budget is 31, uh, near enough, make, you know, not far off 32,000 pounds. So yeah, that's pretty good. Um, don't know how much we're going to use the scouting budget, but uh, it's there to be used. And if we do need to use it, then we can do that. Okay, now looking at the fixtures. So uh, pre-season, we're going to have an intra-team friendly, just so I can kind of get my uh, uh, get a bit of an assessment on with regards to the team and so on. Uh, and then we've got Queen of the South, Durham, Durham, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, Hereford, uh, the under-23 side of Sunderland, and uh, our affiliate team, Great Wakering. And then we'll start the season with a trip to Margate. Again, no basis for comparison, and I've never been this low down on the Football League pyramid, so I'm not quite sure how good they are. Uh, but to one of the big ones that stands out, Thurrock. Um, not our fierce rival, but they are one of our rivals and the only one we'll play in the league as things stand, so that's one to look out for. Um, Metropolitan Police as well. Got to be careful. You know, don't want to foul someone and then get arrested the next day. Um, also, uh, the, we don't have a Boxing Day game, unfortunately, so I suppose Margate again will act as our Boxing Day uh, game and we'll finish out the season with a trip to Enfield Town. Um don't really know much about Enfield Town. I do remember Enfield Town playing Leicester City um, way back in the mid-90s, I think it was, in the FA Cup. Um, so, yeah, that's the only thing I know about Enfield Town. If you know more, let me know in the comments below. Uh, also, maybe Leatherhead is one to look out for as well. We They, they just turned us over in real life in the uh, FA Cup first round replay yesterday at home, which was disappointing. So, yeah, might owe them one. So here are the expectations. So given that we've probably got the best squad in the league and we've got the highest transfer budget and wage budget in the league, I think it's fair to say that if we do not win the league and be promoted via winning the league, then there'll be something amiss and I probably should be fearing for my job. So that's fair. We can't alter that. In terms of the FA Cup and the FA Trophy, um, it was set to here, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go here. So semi-final of the FA Trophy because it would be nice to maybe win something this season. Um, but in terms of the FA Cup, I've gone second round because if my memory serves me correctly, Billericay Town have been to the first round of the FA Cup on four occasions in their history, uh, including this season as well, like I mentioned. But they've never been to the second round. So if I can get to the second round. I would have done something that nobody else has ever done and I'd be very very happy with it if we get to the third round and maybe get one of the big boys because that's where all the Premier League teams come into the draw that would be absolutely amazing and ideally we'd get drawn against Leeds United that would be the one I want because I'm a massive Leeds fan so but we'll go second round for the time being um it's the Indian League Cup there's not really bothered about it so I probably will I'll probably use it as a chance to just maybe rotate some players, give some of the guys who haven't had really much of a run out over the, the early part of the season a run out in that cup there, see what happens. Okay then guys, but that is the end of today's video. Uh, so thank you everybody so much for watching. If you did enjoy and you would like to see more Billy Ricky Rising and Football Manager 2018 content from myself, then make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Also, if you're familiar with the lower leagues and uh, non-league football and you think there's a player that I potentially should be signing and looking at, a little bit of a uh, hidden gem, then let me know in the comments down below. Always happy to hear from you guys. The next episode will be out tomorrow evening, which is Sunday the 19th, and I apologise this episode is a day late, so uh, yeah, but the next one will definitely be out Sunday the 19th um, in the evening around probably 5 o'clock I think it is, and that's where we'll basically be um, having our first live com of the season, so uh, we'll go through, we'll see what happens during pre-season and go through any news and transfers and so on, but uh, yeah, that's something definitely to look forward to because we're travelling to Margate. Uh, but again, thank you everybody so much for watching. Take care, and as always, I will catch you in the next video. Peace!